Morning, guys. Uh, so, so far in this course here, we studied two big chapters. Our first big chapter was on kinematics. It was the study of motion. It introduced to us concepts of displacement, velocity, acceleration. Uh, we had studied some graphs in terms of uh, which way am I going? Is my speed changing, speeding up, slowing down? Uh, in our second chapter, we dealt with uh, dynamics, which was on forces, pushes, and pulls. Uh, we had Newton's three laws basically analyzed for us. Depending on how the tug wars ended up, uh, we may have a net force. If we have a net force, we're going to have an acceleration. We don't need force for motion. We need force for acceleration, and that will actually change speed. Uh, once you found the acceleration, that was our link between the first two chapters. Uh, in this new chapter here, uh, it's a fairly short section on momentum. Uh, essentially, what we're interested in for this is we're going to revisit concepts of mass and velocity, uh, but we're interested in here in actual collisions. So if you think back to kinematics, we dealt with meatball questions, cannonball questions, things like that. We always dealt with V-final as the speed right before hitting. Well, what happens after it collides? That's sort of the question I want to address here. Uh, we're actually going to frame it in terms of momentum. Momentum, as we're going to see, is itself a vector. So a lot of that uh, vector addition stuff will come back. We need to worry about direction. We need to break down components, uh, and we'll go from there. So just as a quick intro uh, to this new chapter here, uh, we are interested in studying the momentum. Momenta is plural. When you say something has momentum, this thing here has the tendency to stay in motion stay in motion. So um, right, if uh, I have a train is trucking along here, that thing is going to be really hard to stop because it has momentum. Um, when I start thinking of momentum here, realistically I should be using the Greek letter uh, rho. So this is Greek. Uh, the letter rho for the symbol for momentum, it's like a squiggly P. Uh, sometimes people have trouble with that, so they people uh, just switch over. Let's just write it as a straight P like that. right? So this momentum, it's a new concept, we haven't addressed it yet, this tendency to stay in motion. This momentum is sometimes described as a motion product because it's going to depend on your m, which is your mass. If my train is heavier, it has more tendency in motion, it's much harder to stop. The other thing that's going to depend on, it's going to be mass times by the velocity. If my speed uh, is actually really, really quick, uh, that has a lot of tendency to keep going, keep trucking along here, it's going to be even harder to actually stop. So this is our first formula that we're going to introduce here. This P here is actually momentum. Uh, momentum, if you just look at the units, I'm going to be taking a mass, which is in kilograms, and multiplying a V, which is velocity. Velocity is actually a meter per second. So momentum as the product of these two here will have units kilograms meter per second. Very similar to kilogram meter per second squared, which will end up as a force. We'll deal with that connection later on, but at least momentum is just uh, kilogram meter per second. I show you this arrow here. Momentum here is a vector. Uh, momentum is a vector uh, in the same direction as your velocity. So if my car is going to the right, it has a tendency to stay going to the right unless you actually supply an impulse and unless you supply to bring it to a stop. The momentum, that tendency to continue on to the right, it just continues forwards like that. So let's just do a quick practice of this question here. Uh, we're going to have a 30 kilogram child rides a 50 kilogram bike at 4.5 meters per second. Sometimes in your uh, worksheets, it actually read it like this. The meter has no power, so that's meters on top. Whenever you have a negative, that means actually a per second. So that's basically saying the unit is meter per second, so velocity. Uh, I want you to actually calculate or determine, uh, determine the momentum for the child and the momentum for the bike. Right. So if I can just start off with a picture here, here's my bike. Right. Nice bike there. I have a 50 kilogram bike. My child is uh, sitting on top of the bike here. He's 30 kilograms. And they're sort of trucking along here at 4.5 meter per second. Because I have mass that's moving, they have to have this momentum. They have to have this tendency to stay in motion. I'm just asked to calculate that there. So let's do it individually first. So if we want to find the momentum of the child, what I want to do here is I want to take what's the mass of the child times the velocity. Well, the mass of the child here happens to be 30 kilograms. The velocity happens to be 4.5. When I multiply those two there, 30 times 4.5 gives me here 135. Again, the unit is going to be kilogram meter per second. In terms of the direction here, when we had positive, that meant forwards. The momentum is also positive. It also means the tendency to stay in motion is also in the same direction. How about similarly the momentum for the bike? 
While the momentum of the bike here is similarly going to be mass times velocity, the bike happens to be a little bit heavier, 50. It's also trucking along at 4.5. 50 times 4.5 gives you here 225. Also in the positive direction, 225 kilogram meter per second. And that's going to be the tendency, the difficulty uh, to stop that bike there. Now, uh, because the child and the bike sort of travel together, we can treat them as a system together. I can ask you, well, what's the total momentum for both of them? Well, since I have the two individual numbers here, you could just simply say, well, the child has 135, the bike has 225 here. In total, this is here is 360. I can just take these two numbers and add them. And what you're going to find mathematically here is, wait a second, because the system was just the, the child and the bike together, we can just treat the total mass as actually, it's 30 plus 50 times 4.5, and you're going to actually end up with that same 360 here. Uh, things that do this here, um, in math, we're going to say, momentum, or momenta, again for plural, if you take the, the tendency to stay in motion for the child on the bike, momenta actually add linearly. They actually add, there's no fancy powers or anything, you could have calculated their individual momentum themselves and then add them up, or add up their masses first and then multiply it in that fashion there, and that's also going to give you 360. That's a total tendency to stay in motion. In this chapter we'll talk about what you have to do to actually get rid of that tendency to stay in motion. Uh, I'm just going to introduce to you, uh, not only this formula here, introduce to you the two main setups uh, in this question. Uh, the first main setup is referred to as a constant, uh, actually in both setups here, uh, we actually rely on momentum actually being conserved quantity. So let's do this first. Uh, conservation of momentum. In our science courses, uh, we learn of a few uh, values that are conserved. Uh, energy is conserved, uh, mass is conserved. Momentum is also one of these concepts that are conserved. If you're going to define it here, uh, this momentum here, momentum cannot be created or destroyed. Whatever amount of momentum that was coming into the collision has to be the same as going out. It can't disappear. but because objects can sort of, well, I can collide and I can change speed. It can, this momentum concept, this tendency to stay in motion can be actually transferred between objects, but can be transferred uh, between objects. Right. So that's a sort of key idea. We're going to be practicing sort of many different styles of this question, but the physics actually boils down always to the momentum coming in has to be the momentum going out. Easy as that. Sure, we're going to factor in some two-dimensional stuff later on and all that, but uh, that's basically the physics. The rest of it is just math from here on out. So with that, I do want to introduce to you the sort of two main setups we're going to deal with. First main setup are sort of a collision-style problem. If momentum is supposed to be conserved in a collision, how might that end up looking like? So let's start off with a 200-kilogram car moving at speed limit, so 50 kilometers per hour hits a 400 kilogram truck, so something that's twice as massive, uh, at rest, given the car continues forwards, so after the collision, uh, to move, uh, uh, continues forwards uh, at, let's say, uh, 3 kilometers per hour, Right. It lost a lot of its speed. Right? It was going 50, and after colliding, it still had a little bit of momentum to continue forwards, just at 3 uh, kilometers per hour uh, after collision, after colliding. Uh, I want to know, find uh, the velocity of the truck. Okay. So again, we're addressing this notion. Um, kinematics just studied up to the impact speed. It's your speed right before hitting, but in this case here, we've hit, and now what? So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to start off with a picture. I have two objects. I have a car. I know it's 200 kilograms. I know it's going at 50 kilometers per hour. Unfortunately, that's not the right unit, so I'm going to go 50, divide that 3.6 to get it to meter per second. Uh, just do a little bit of rounding here, so that's give or take about 14 meter per second or so, 13.9. So I'm going at 14 meter per second. Unfortunately, my car collides with a truck. The truck is twice as big. The truck is now 400 kilograms, and this truck here was told we were at rest. So that has absolutely no momentum because it's not moving. That's sort of the before. This is happening uh, before the collision. After the collision, they collide, the car stays intact, and the car continues traveling forwards only at 3 kilometers per hour. 
So again, still not the right units. So let's divide it by 3.6. 3 divided by 3.6 is, uh, let's say, 0.8 uh, meter per second. Right? So in the correct units, it still had a little bit of, like, it had so much tendency going in, even after the collision, it could have rebound backwards. But this one here is still sort of just coasting along a little bit, but it's only 0 0.8 meter per second. It's nowhere near as fast as it was to begin with. That must mean that the car has actually transferred a lot of its momentum, transferred a lot of its sort of moving uh, mo motion product to the truck. And the question here is, how fast does the truck go? So we have a notable before and after. Uh, again, I'm just going to keep emphasizing this. The physics is actually fairly simple. The physics is the momentum before the collision has to be the momentum after collision. Momentum in our science courses is a conserved quantity. Momentum can't just disappear, although it can be transferred from object to object. And pretty much what you're going to have is you're going to have a separate momentum term for every object that you have. In this case here, I have a P1 for the car and a P2 for the truck. After the collision, I still have a P1 and a P2. I still have two objects. We'll deal with collisions uh, more in detail in tomorrow's lesson, but just for uh, starters here, I have two objects before, two objects afterwards. I'm going to make a note that these ones here are final because my momentum may be different from what they were before. And let's just factor in our formula. Well, I know my momentum is equal to mass times velocity. Where, wherever I see uh, P, I can actually type in M times V. So I'm going to type this in here. M1 V1 for the car is equal to M2 V2 is equal to M1 V1 final. Sounds like the car is intact, uh, so the M1 hasn't changed, and the truck is intact, M2. It's just a notion of the speeds are actually different. So let's just punch our way through the numbers here. Should be fairly easy. Uh, 200 kilograms worth of mass. My speed, once I have the correct SI units, here is 14. My truck here was much more massive. It's 400 kilograms. But like we said, because this one here was currently at rest, it's not moving. It has no tendency to stay in motion, right? Momentum is your tendency to keep going. Well, I'm not moving, so it makes sense that that one there is zero. After the collision, right, it has to equal 200. The car keeps going at 0 0.8. The truck, which is, I'm assuming, is still 400 kilograms. I want to calculate what the final speed is, assuming that the momentum has to be conserved. So let's just try this out here. 200 times 14 gives me here 2,800. Let's add zero from the truck, 200 times 0.8. The car continues with a forward momentum of 160. The remainder has to be transferred to the truck. So here's what we're doing. We're looking at what's the total momentum going in. The total momentum uh, is between the car and the truck. The truck we had said was not moving. The truck contributes zero. The total momentum going in is 2,800. This 2,800 has to be conserved after the collision. I still have to have a total 2,800. I still have two objects though. The car ends up taking with it 160. The remainder has to be transferred to um, the truck. So if I took the 2800, I minus off the 160 over. Uh, 2800 minus 160 gives me the remainder. 2640 has to be transferred to the truck. Now that is a momentum. Momentum is still the product between mass times velocity. Because this truck here actually happens to have more mass, I want to actually divide the mass over. What's 2640 divided by 400? How fast does that have to be going? The V2F, the truck, actually needs to leave with 6.6 .6 to make sure the momentum is conserved. Because the 6.6 .6 is a positive number, I know it's actually traveling forwards. So if you watch this collision a action here, the car sort of hits this truck from behind. The car loses a lot of its speed, right? 14 meter per second, drops down to about 1 meter per second or so. The truck ends up zipping off, and it zips off at 6.6 .6 meter per second. Right? So based on this physics here, where momentum has to be a conserved quantity, I can actually calculate sort of how much uh, the um, velocity the truck has to leave so that momentum is conserved. We are going to do a lot with uh, mass and velocity uh, as we step through uh, this chapter here. Uh, careful, our physics is not conservation of velocity. It's not like, oh, 14 meter per second, it has to be conserved between oh, 0.8 there and then the remainder here. It's not velocity that has to be conserved. It's velocity times the mass. It's a momentum concept. Uh, it's that tendency, that mass times velocity number that has to be conserved. So more on that in a later lesson. That's our first uh, big setup. We'll deal with uh, collisions uh, more in tomorrow's lesson. Uh, I also want to show you the other big setup here, which is more, uh, it is just a conservation style problem. It's a sort of separation kind of problem. And I want you to sort of picture this uh, with me here. Uh, let's imagine I had a, a 
a space shuttle. So a space shuttle, we usually have the middle of the space shuttle here called the payload. This is the part that actually goes into space. Uh, you're gonna like we need to be um, using burning up a lot of fuel here, right? It, we need to overcome gravity and actually get out into orbit. Usually your space shuttle. It has a payload, that's where the astronauts sit, that's where all your equipment and everything that you want to bring into space sits. Usually the space shuttle at first actually has some uh, gas cylinder, a gas turbine here. And basically I'm going to burn up all the fuel and then somewhere along the way it actually ditches this gas turbine. By tossing away that gas turbine, it's going to give you a little bit more oomph, a little bit more push going upwards. So that's uh, sort of the starting picture here. Uh, I'm going to imagine, so this sort of happened beforehand. I'm going to imagine starting off, let's say my space shuttle is burning up some of the fuel. At one moment, the space shuttle, uh, let's make uh, give you the masses here. Uh, let's say the total thing combined is actually 10,000 kilograms. Uh, the payload part is actually, let's uh, make it 6,000 kilograms. As I burn up the fuel, it gets converted to gas and gets tossed out. It actually provides me that thrust that I need. So this one here is going to be, let's say, 4,000 kilograms. Let's say for a little while, um, the velocity of this space shuttle, let's say the velocity happens to be some uh, 500 meter per second, right? So I'm burning through my fuel here, I'm actually uh, getting uh, this uh, speed for the 10,000 kilograms. Now I'm at a point here where, okay, I'm going to, I pretty much burned up all my fuel, I'm ready to ditch this 4,000 kilogram um, chamber. What I want to know is, I want to focus on just this part here, I want to focus on, because I am a mass in total of 10,000 kilograms, I have a speed of 500, when I actually like sort of press the button and actually uh, ditch these cylinders here, uh, because these cylinders are going to be sort of tossed downwards at a sort of downwards velocity, that's going to be given a momentum going downwards. What added momentum does that give me to go push upwards? So in this case here, my before is my space shuttle just flying through the air. The after is going to involve the separation of this. I'm going to have the payload, the 6,000 kilogram here, continue going forwards at some velocity. I'm going to calculate what that is uh, upon ditching the 4,000 kilogram uh, sort of dead weight here. The 4,000 kilogram, uh, let's say I toss it downwards at 100 meter per second. So I know I was burning out the fuel here to actually get me up to this 500. I just want to study this sort of momentum aspect of it. So this one, inherently, it's not quite a collision. It's not one thing colliding with something, but still the physics is the same. Whatever momentum that this object had at the beginning, the P-in has to be matched up to the P-out. So let's just try that here. P-in is equal to P-out. This is when they're all together. At the beginning, I had sort of one and the same object. So I'm just going to say maybe M total V total. You could totally say M1 V1, M2 V2. Use 1 as 6,000, 1 as 4,000. It just easier if I just combine them to remember moment to add linearly. After they separate, the after problem, I actually separate into the two parts. I now break off into the payload part. Let's say M1 V1 plus M2 V2, which is the uh, when I ditch the gas cylinders, the gas cylinders are going to start falling. The physics, again, is very simple. It just says momentum has to be conserved. Momentum can't be created, destroyed. You can't sneak in extra momentum that wasn't there to begin with. So let's just try out this problem here, and we'll end off with this. The total mass is 6,000 plus 4,000. The total mass here was 10,000. We were traveling at a speed of 500 meter per second. When I then ditch the cylinders, my 6,000 kilogram payload is going to be sort of thrust forward at some velocity. I'm going to have an extra little bit here. I'm going to drop the 4,000. Not only does that allow me to have less mass I'm trying to accelerate, that's going to help me in boosting forwards. But this act of actually ditching the payload, ditching the gas cylinders, I'm going to throw it downwards because velocity is a vector, I need to show that as a negative, so I need to put in that as negative 100. Let's see what the math gives you here. 10,000 times 500 gives you 5 million. So what it's saying here is at the beginning, I had 5 million tendency to stay in motion going forwards. Afterwards, after we separate, we still have to have a total of this 5 million. That 5 million is now separated between the payload part and the sort of the gas chambers, the gas cylinders there. As I ditch the 4,000 at negative 100, it's like I throw the gas cylinders downwards. 4,000 times 100 uh, gives me here uh, 400,000. So this is actually going to take away, or it's going to have a tendency to stay in motion, negative uh, 400,000. That means my payload is actually going to go up 
uh, see to get pushed a little bit uh, faster and I can calculate what's the final speed not just faster because there's less mass to accelerate but the final speed because I'm actually um, because I'm throwing these objects downwards I'm actually going to uh, transfer some of that momentum to the payload so here's how we look at the number here uh, this one here is the momentum of the entire rocket payload and the gas cylinder all together this 5 million here had to be conserved. That's why I'm saying they have to be equal between these two numbers. But what's happening here is because I'm ditching the gas cylinders here, I'm actually dropping these cylinders. So this one here, uh, the gas cylinders are dropped. It's almost like forcefully you toss them downwards, are dropped with a momentum of 400,000. What's going to happen is if I bring that 400,000 over, well, in total, I had 5 million. I uh, moved the 400,000 over. Now I have 5,400,000 uh, for the payload part to actually go with it. Because momentum is conserved, because I'm actually forcefully dropping this object downwards, that's actually going to give me an extra push going in the upward direction. So you'll notice that my, yes, my total momentum is conserved, but the total momentum that's left for my payload is actually increased. So we can say here, uh, there's actually, even though momentum was conserved overall, more momentum to speed the payload along, okay, to speed where the astronauts and the equipment is. And it's also going to be faster because my payload here is also now a lighter mass. This is also going to amount to even greater velocity. I already would have had a bigger velocity even if I was still a 10,000 kilogram uh, mass. But in this case, because I'm lighter mass, lighter mass is uh, easier to speed up. I'm not uh, actually going to get into the acceleration concepts in this lesson, but basically you're going to divide the 6,000 over. 5,400,000 divided by 6,000 uh, gives you a velocity of 900 meter per second. And just qualitatively, if you just look at those numbers, at first, we were zipping upwards at 500. We're going to end up, the, just the payload part here, we'll end up going at 900, almost double the speed. And again, the reason why it was almost double is for two reasons. First reason is it is a lighter mass, right? Lighter masses are much easier to accelerate. I'm not trying to bring the entire rocket ship into space, just the payload portion. So ditching that 4,000 kilograms was good, but also I gain in the sense, second reason, as I ditch the 4,000 kilograms, I almost throw it downwards. As I throw it downwards, that uh, has a downwards uh, momentum. That takes with it some tendency to stay in motion. For momentum to be conserved, I also gain that 40,000 going upwards as well. That's why, 400,000. Uh, that's why in total I have 5,400,000, and that and amounts to giving me a total velocity. So practice through a few questions on the worksheet. Um, our physics does end up fairly simple as that. We have these two formulas here. Momentum is uh, mass times velocity. We'll use this formula quite a lot. And then we're going to see a few different setups here where momentum is conserved. Yeah, we're going to add in the two-dimensional stuff and the vector stuff later on. But the physics just boils down to those two concepts. Right? So we'll pick it up from there tomorrow. Thanks, guys.